Okay, where do I start? I never know how to start these things, especially when it comes to kind of a uh, review-proof series like Twilight. By the way, it always kills me when, uh, uh, over the over the title of every single one of these movies now, it's called The Twilight Saga. I don't know, I don't know, there's something about the word saga, the, the Twilight Saga. This is not just a mere story, it's a saga. Mm, I don't know, it bothers me. But there's really no point in me reviewing this thing, and it, it's it's kind of silly. Um, you know, it's not like you're not tuning in this review for me to tell you whether or not this is a good movie or a good story or not. You know, it's not. It's pretty much universally accepted that Twilight is probably the worst, seriously, like the worst cultural phenomenon to occur this decade. It's going to be like um, I'll get back to this, but you know, it, we're going to look back on this and realize that it was really fucking silly. But, you know, like, I'm not going to change anyone's mind. You know, that's that's part of the problem of being a critic sometimes is, you know, you touch these, uh, the, there, there are certain sacred cows that I could I could review all day. Like, you know, like, I hate to I hate, hate, keep bringing back to Final Fantasy, but, like, you know, if you like Final Fantasy, I'm not going to change your mind, you know, especially since it's one of those cult phenomena. So, Twilight, I'm not expecting any of the Twihearts to look at this and go, like, Jesus Christ, this is really fucking stupid when I'm watching. Um, I, I, although I do think it's funny how, um, my brother and I were talking about this a while back, and, uh, we, we were discussing, like, is this just, am I, like, holding this up to a double standard? Like, um, you know, if I was making fun of Twilight, and somebody, uh, turned it around on me and was like, oh, yeah, well, you like this, which is equally as stupid, you know, like, some kind of reverse, uh, some, some kind of guy phenomenon where, like, we're, we're dealing with a sociopathic guy who's manipulating and, and basically tormenting two hapless women. You know, there's there's really not a series like that. You know, um, the only thing I could think of was maybe I could be bashing on wrestling and, and you know, a Twilight fan and be like, oh yeah, well, you like wrestling. That's fucking stupid. And I was like, no, yeah, well, 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 well. You might have something there. And at the same time, I said, well, no, because... I have always fully admitted that wrestling is completely stupid. And I watch it because it's really bad and at the same time really funny. So, I guess where I'll start with this one is, um... The reason you watch this one is to watch my reaction to it, I think. And, um, I, you know, you want me to tell you whether or not it's really funny. And... From a technical standpoint and from a storytelling standpoint... This is the best of the Twilight Saga so far. But from like a Riff Tracks perspective, from a, you know, you watch it because it's so bad it's good, this is probably the worst. Um, the original Twilight and New Moon are hilarious movies. Like, I'm telling you, like, seriously, New Moon was one of the best theater experiences I've ever been to because it was funny. It was like, the, it, I you couldn't have made an intentionally funnier movie. Like... You, this, you could actually argue, like, you know how Tommy Wiseau made The Room, and he came back later and said, oh, this was totally a black comedy. I made this as a comedy. Like, if, if the director, I think it was Weiss, if, if he had Weiss had come back and said, oh, this was a co you didn't know this was a comedy? <laughs> um, man, like, New Moon would have blown your mind, because it was, like, seriously, New Moon is a work of genius. If this, if this had been a seriously satirical work, you'd have been like, this is the greatest movie ever made. But, uh, Eclipse... By the way, there's no eclipses in this film. I'm always rather annoyed by that. Uh, same same with the new moon. There's no new moons in this in that movie. It's really boring. And the trailer would have you believe that this is like the action-packed climax of the Twilight Saga. You know, like all shit's gonna break loose. So we get, you know, they've been building up this feud between the red-headed vampire and the Cullens and stuff like that. How she's raising an army and... Finally, that army hits, and there's going to be this big war. It doesn't happen. The The war takes... Seriously, it's a, it's about a three-minute action climax, at best. It really doesn't build to anything. And so, this is really a watch-checking movie. Where... Honestly, it, 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 it's kind of funny. I spent most of this movie daydreaming. Trying to figure stuff out. And I'll tell you what I was trying to figure out in a minute, but... Really, the first hour of this is simultaneously the most tolerable and yet kind of really boring. Uh, that's not making much sense, but I'll try to explain. Really, 
the, this is it was really interesting. I thought the first hour was okay, honestly, and I, I actually I started to analyze in the theater why, and I was like, why was I? Why am I kind of tolerating this so far? And I, I realized why. It's because this movie probably more than any other film, and the first hour more than any other part of that movie, we don't spend nearly as much time with Edward and Bella, who are by far the most loathsome and repetitive droning creatures in literary history. Like in the first hour of this, we actually deal with several of the Cullen characters, like uh, like Jasper, the the I forget his name now, the the blonde doctor guy, um, Carlisle, the you know the other guys in that clan who actually kind of go into their backstories in flashbacks, and you kind of realize finally three movies in what their deal is, you know where they come from, uh, you know why they have the kind of experiences they've had, what their attitudes are kind of like that, and believe it or not, their characters are far more interesting and well developed than Edward and Bella. So, when you're talking with Jasper and Carlisle, and, and I forget, uh, Julie, I think her name is, the blonde one, you know, I was like, wow, these characters actually have a backstory. They have motivations. They have a history. Whereas, whenever Edward and Bella are on screen, you know, after, at a certain point, I realized, like, it, it's, it's stunning to me in this movie how many conversations they have just like one-on-one -on -one conversations between Edward and Bella, right? They have so many of these conversations in different places, in different situations, but they're always talking about the same thing. So, I, I really started at about the, the hour mark, kind of like droning off and trying to figure out Twilight. It was a hopeless, a hopeless effort, I know. But I was like, you know... There has to be something behind this this thing, you know, this this whole Twilight phenomenon. You know, I really want to understand it because I believe it or not, I don't go into these films wanting to hate them. Like, uh, like Final Fantasy thirteen. I know it's hard to believe, but you probably thought I just went in there like like gung ho wanting to hate that fucking game, and I didn't. I was actually trying to fool myself into liking it for a long time, so I wasn't trying to. I really didn't hold any hopes I was going to like Twilight, but. You know, I wasn't going in there being like, I'm going to rip this movie a new asshole. If it was good, I would tell you. And so I, I, I told you, like, this movie actually started off pretty promisingly. You know, it told, it, it, we actually followed the, uh, Riley, the, the newborn vampire, as, as he was kind of dealing with the hunger and the thirst and, and trying to raise this coven and trying to keep him under control. Believe it or not, that was actually far more interesting than anything we had seen up to this point. But... With Edward and Bella, I'm just trying to figure it out. You know, this this slavish obsession, this this breathtaking romance that has enraptured so many people. Like I wanted to get that. I like I really wanted to to decode this thing. You know, and 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 understand why. And I was like, uh, you know, watching these guys talk over and over and over again. I just started asking some very simple questions. Like, uh, and, and see if you can play along and answer this thing. And don't, don't, don't point at the novels and tell me there's anything in the novels that explain this. I'm going just from the movie. Movie perspective, just figure this out. Now, I've often criticized the, the apparent romance between Edward and Bella as really just being a lustful relationship. Like, they want to fuck... And that's why they're so devoted to each other. And had this been some kind of, uh, I hate to say postmodern, but some kind of ironic take on, you know, two tragic teenagers mistaking lust for love, mistaking a high school crush for love, this might have been a far more intelligent series than anyone gave it credit for. But it's not. We are really meant to believe that Edward and Bella are, like, true love eternal devotion, one in a zillion, you know, one-on-one -on -one perfect pairing of love. They get each other. They are destined to be. She is willing to sacrifice everything. She is willing to throw her life, throw any, any semblance of a normal life, kids, family, integration into normal society. She's willing to devote herself to the kingdom of darkness forever enslaved to the thirst for blood 
uh, the the eternal urge to kill and murder uh, and feed on people. And I just had a very simple question: Why? And I was looking for this answer: Why do they love each other so much? And okay, aside from the raw physical urge to fuck, answer this question. Name one interest that Edward and Bella share in common. Take your time. I'm not joking here. Like, if you can answer this question, name one thing that they mutually like. Name one thing. Name one thing aside from uh, their urge to be together. Like, as, as, you know, one thing aside from them wanting to be married or them wanting to fuck or them wanting to spend eternity or or talking about the logistics of how it would work. Name one thing they have ever talked about aside from cellular mitosis. I can't. They, I, 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 okay, I'll even go one simpler. Name one thing that Bella Swan is interested in, period. It's a simple question. And, you know, if after three movies you can't answer that, I started I started actually digging back. I started thinking, like, well, have I seen her do anything socially? I've seen her watch a movie, but she was kind of psychotic at the time. I don't think you can qualify that as a response. Uh, you've seen her reading Romeo and Juliet, but that was a school assignment. I can't qualify that as an interest. Uh, she took ballet once, I think. I don't think they ever really talk about it. Um, I remember one time Jacob and her were fixing a motorcycle, and um, they're playing music, and she tells him to turn the radio off, and he's like, what, you don't like music? And I think she goes, like, not really. So, um, hmm. She doesn't like music. Um... And on the flip side, I actually did come up with an answer for this one. Name one thing that interests Edward Cullen. And I came up with an answer. He likes baseball sometimes. He, he plays baseball with his family. They never talk about baseball. I don't really think Bella's into baseball. But it's just, it's, th it's things like that that really puzzle me about the how people relate, how women especially relate to Twilight as a series. You know, um, just how, how much they buy into this relationship. How much they, uh, how much they relate to Edward and Bella and, and are just so believing in, in their devotion to one another. Um, and so they have so many conversations and it stuns me how thick these books are, how long these books go on, how long these movies are, how many conversations Edward and Bella have, but it's all about the same thing. Every time they get together, it's basically her begging him to make her a vampire, in this movie at least. You know, she she wants, she's she's like, make me a vampire. He goes, no, I can't. It's dangerous. I, 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 I don't want you to become like me. I fear for your soul. It's dangerous. You'll kill people. I don't want that on my conscience. You're too precious to me, Bella. I don't want that to happen. And she, like, she keeps begging him, please make me a vampire. I want to be like you. I don't want to grow old. I don't want you to... I want you to want me forever. I want you to find me attractive forever because, you know, once again, we're going back to the shallow physical attraction is the only thing that interests Bella Swan. But it's, it's, it's remarkable. Like, every conversation is like that. And so every conversation, they either... They are trying to, like compromise and make a deal about you know how and when she'll become a vampire how and when they'll get married whether or not he'll make her a vampire before or after uh when they'll actually fuck you know like they she wants to have sex but he wants to wait for marriage but they make a deal like you know i want to i want to have sex with you before i become a vampire and He's like, no, 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 it's too dangerous, I'll hurt you, I have to do it after, but I don't want to make you a vampire at all. And you can see, it, it's just over and over with this shit. It, it, like, you can really see how I started to drone off here. Like, I, 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 I don't know how they can keep discussing this shit and, and <laughs> nothing gets accomplished. 
And in the, this movie, I think more than any other, really, it, you know, I, at first I really just hated Bella, and I still do. But this movie really wanted me to hate both Edward and Jacob, to the point where it's like, it's like, fuck Team Edward and Team Jacob, it's not about that anymore. All of these characters are horrible people. So, like, Jacob, like, okay, Jacob comes off as, like, a fucking rapist in this movie. It's, it's, it's hilarious how, how, uh, what's the word? How desperate, how obsessed he is with, uh, fucking Bella. You know, and let's just ignore the fact, for instance, that, that I have no idea what they see in, in Bella at all. She's this drowsy-eyed, blank slate of a mumbling woman who, let's face facts, is not all that attractive. Like, she is, like, she's attractive, but she's, she's not like Helen of fucking Troy. You know, she's, she's not, she's not this woman who you would, you would go to war for, you know, like, like just, like, and once again, I'm going based purely on physical looks here, which, again, is the only thing I'm left falling back on because there's no substantive connection between the, any of them on a mental, philosophical, theological level. They make no kind of mental connection, so I, I have to resort to the physical. You know, like, you know, I, I just don't get Bella here. But Jacob, he comes across... Like a rapist. Like, I, I can't even tell you how many lines. I was looking over it at Scarlet going like, that's the exact thing a rapist would say. Like, you uh, you love me, you just won't admit it yet. Or, in time you'll, gr you, in time you'll grow to love me, I'll make you love me. Or, um, better you be dead than be with him. Uh, uh, better you be dead than be one of them. Warning signs. <laughs> creepy little bit. So the fact that he's so obsessed with with fucking Bella. And let's face it, you know, Anna Kendrick is right across the table. Anna Kendrick, who is fucking slumming being in these Twilight movies. Did you see her in Up in the Air? She's amazing. And the fact that she's actually so able to pull off the stupid Valley Girl routine in this movie. Anna Kendrick is an amazing actress. Gorgeous to boot, and I was like, she is by far more beautiful than fucking Kristen Stewart with her sunken, shadowed eyes and her, her like chipmunky teeth and her fucking mumbling all the time. I don't know. Even like the, the the cute little Asian girl, I thought was better looking than fucking Bella Swan. But okay, but like Jacob, fucking slavish to this woman, and I just don't get it. Like to the point, he's obsessive. He's wanting to kill people, and Jake, and I'm sorry, Edward. Edward now has become this, like, controlling son of a bitch who's, like, uh, he's always staring at her and, like, being all controlling, wanting to know where she's going and why and who she's seeing and threatening to kill this dude for paying too much attention to her. And, and I, 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 at first I kind of thought maybe that's why people related to Edward so much, that Maybe all they want is a man who is willing to go to the wall for them and, and willing to kill and sacrifice and do all these things for them. And I guess if that's what... But, like, that's not really a unique trait to the Twilight series. And I think that's what kills me of the Twilight series is... You know, we're looking into... Here's, here's what it is. We're dealing with a bodice ripper Harlequin romance story about a woman who's torn between two shadowy, mysterious, angsty dudes. But that's not a new phenomenon. You know, that's like from the beginning of, from epic storytelling from the beginning, there's entire sections do uh, devoted to that kind of literature. It's called Harlequin Romance. It's called the romance section in general. Um, you know, you can find all sorts of trash romance that is actually far better written than Twilight, that deals with almost the exact same topic. It, it's it's better done that way, where we, you know we have these two two beefy, bulging, mysterious, angsty heroes fighting over a woman. That's not new. That's soap opera. You know that's. So I think that's why it it, it mystifies me so much, 
is that we we you know this is this is well tread over ground, but why this? You know why the fucking Cullens? There's so many romance authors who have done much better work on a much trashier subject that I I, I don't know. But Edward here, um, actually Edward shows far more emotion in this movie than I think he ever has before. In fact, this is the only time I think I've ever seen Edward smile in three movies. He smiles. And I was like, that's such an alien expression. I was like, it stuck out in my mind. He was just like, he was kind of joking at certain points. And I think it's a real credit to the director that uh, who's done uh, Hard Candy uh, that he was able to turn out actually really good performances out of even Kristen Stewart, who I am really turning on as an actress, like as being just abominably bad. Uh, Pattinson, who I think is actually dreadfully miscast as Edward Cullen. Um, I, I, this is just from a dude standpoint, but I don't think he looks all that attractive. I, uh, I, I don't, I don't think he looks all that mysterious or threatening or even much as a sex object. In fact, I think he looks more than a little ridiculous. Sparkling aside, he looks like he's got clown white makeup on, and he looks like the, the eyebrows, the, the two dark hairy eyebrows, he kind of looks like me in that short film I did, which was, you know, the makeup job there was kind of silly. But, uh, oh, where was I going with this? Um, Edward, man, he, he, he's really obsessive with this thing, but... Like, the the first 70 minutes or so is just, like, the, the talking, you know, and, and and ironically enough, it's it's probably the best part of it. Um, Jasper has more of a role, the, the kind of the, the Harpo character, the, you know, you, you find out he, by the way, uh, Scarlet was, was rolling when we see Jasper in his Civil War Majors outfit. She was just like, really? We're, we're going here? He, look at him. He's in a fucking Civil War outfit. He looks like a fucking dolt. And, like, she was just... She was rolling at that point. She was laughing her ass off. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I was going to say something about the Harlequin romance thing. Like, how it... Uh, fuck, I lost it. Fuck, it doesn't matter. But um, th th I'll try to recap the story here, such as it is. Nothing really happens in this movie. This movie ends... And they're, like, exactly where they were when when New Moon ended, you know? Like, he proposes marriage, and that's kind of where we're at at the end of this movie. Like, they're like, we're going to get married. Credits! And so, okay. Here's what happens. The red-headed vampire Victoria wants revenge on Edward for killing her ponytailed fruity boyfriend at the end of Twilight. So, um, she starts raising a vampire army in Seattle, none too subtly, I might add, because as we all know, newborn vampires are never more physically potent or dangerous than when they are first made, which I always, which kind of runs contrary to common vampire lore where you would think that as vampires get older, they would grow more powerful. You know, honing their gifts, honing their talents, becoming more physically powerful, subsisting on the blood of mortals. Like, every vampire book I've ever seen is like, older vampires would logically be more powerful. I, I guess they're just trying to put over the fact that new vampires have less of a grip on their rage and their hunger, so they're frenzied. They're, they're kind of in a frenzy. So, okay... And I'm down with that, but these vampires are literally tearing apart Seattle to the point where you can see it's national news. And there's, like, riots are breaking out, mysterious gang violence is tearing apart Seattle. And actually, again, I was actually kind of interested in that because for once, things are happening. For once, we're not talking about Edward and Bella's really go-nowhere romance. You know, we've actually got political intrigue. We've got violence, the threat of something bigger occurring. Because the characters are talking about, wow, those vampires are not being very subtle. They're tearing apart Seattle. They're killing people en masse. You know, like, the murders here are skyrocketing. Why don't the Volturi do something about this? And sure enough, the Volturi are kind of observing this, and I'm like, this is kind of interesting. Like, maybe something might be happening with the Volturi. Something might be happening with the 
vampire community at large. That interested me. Silly though it is, as complete fucking nonsense the vampire lore is, it was more interesting than the romance. Maybe that's just the dude and me talking, but the romance does nothing for me. So the Volturi come down and they observe this thing and they're like, should we do something about this? And of course they go, yeah. <laughs> Why do something? Why start now? Why start doing anything in this fucking series? Dakota Fanning, who is, I think, Jane, the blonde vampire who can cause pain with a thought. Again, miscast. Wasted. Her character does nothing in this film except have really ridiculous contact lenses in. What kills me about the Volturi... Um, if you don't know, the Volturi are like the elite coven of ancient vampires who are like the political stroke in all the world. Like if you like if you break the vampire laws, the Volturi fucking kill you. Well, apparently they don't, because these newborn vampires are literally tearing Seattle, burning it down, and the Volturi have their thumbs up their asses. But what kills me about the Volturi is they dress like it's the Italian Renaissance. Like they dress in these really elaborate coats with the frilly lace cravats. You know, they have, like, dueling swords on, and they have the the huge thigh-high boots that are, like, riding boots that are, like, leather, and they have the big frilly hats, and they have their hair pulled back in ponytails, and they've got the, the fucking frilly wigs, and, like, it's, like, the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. They go outside like this. They walk around dressed like this. Wouldn't you think if you're, like, an immortal fucking vampire, and, you know, you... <laughs> T-shirt and jeans. You know, it's 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 kind of a funny part of vampire lore how many, like, vampires, you know, dress like Blade. You know, they, they dress head to toe in leather. They've all got a trench coat. They've all got a katana. They all wear shades no matter what time of night it is. And, you know, that's just as bad. Well, not quite as bad. You know, you might think somebody's just a gothic dude, but how much attention do you draw to yourself when you, when you step out of the fucking shadows dress like your character from Les Miserables or something like you know it's it just it's like they're stepping off an opera you know like, and they got the fucking glowing eyes which to me the 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 red piercing eyes is far more of a giveaway to their vampiric nature and that happens all the time than the fucking sparkling and the sparkling they seem to have just forgotten I, I don't get this. Like, Edward just walks around in the daylight all the time. Like, he goes to the sheriff's office and meets Charlie Swan in broad daylight, and he's not really sparkling. And even if he was, I don't know what Charlie would think. Except that he's really fruity, and he already kind of thinks that. Um, Charlie is one of the most laid-back, easygoing parents I've ever seen in my life, because, like, the entire movie, she's got, like, human bite marks that are, like, scarred on her arm. She she routinely comes home with injuries, and Charlie's like, is Edward treating you right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, totally. He's like, all right, you're grounded. This guy, I don't know, this guy, I don't know. Um. Anyway, so the, she's raising an army, and of course there's no suspense in any of this, because Alice the Cullen Vampire can see the future. So she knows everything that's about to happen, which, you know the best way to completely undermine all drama or suspense in your movie is have a character who can unerringly see the future, predict what's going to happen, and completely undermine the villain's machinations at every turn, so the heroes are always ready for them when the villains arrive. That's bad storytelling because dramatically there's no there's no drama, you know, like there's there's no secrets, there's no suspense. You know what's going to happen, and sure enough, pretty much everything happens the way she figures. But like the reason uh Victoria's trying to apparently she's trying to circumvent the future site by creating Riley as a vampire and sending Riley off to make vampires and sending Riley off to do things so it's somehow indirect, and that will somehow circumvent Alice's vision. 
And it kind of does, but it doesn't. Because she sees it happening anyway, and they're, sure enough, they're pretty much ready for him. So, the story, uh, meanwhile, the Edward front, uh, Bella refuses to marry Edward until she makes him a, makes her a vampire, and Edward says, I'll do it as soon as we're married, and blah, 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 blah. It, seriously, they spend like 50 minutes hashing this out in just really boring talky scenes. Um, Jacob, this whole time, is like smoldering over Bella. This, it's just like, I don't know. They, 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 and finally they decide they're going to call a truce because they realize that Victoria's coming and so they're like, okay, we'll team up with the Cullens and beat up the vampires, but, you know, that's as far as we go. So, you know, Edward is growing more and more jealous of Jacob because he has abs. I don't know. Uh, so, okay, Jasper's like, I know how to deal with vampires because when the Civil War, I fought vampires all the time. Just roll with it okay jasper knows how to deal with this shit so like jasper he's like i'm gonna i want all the cullens in this field and i'm gonna get all the werewolves and i'm gonna teach you how to fight newborn vampires and what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down this ambush in an open field and let them attack us in this open field because tactically that's brilliant somehow i don't know You'd think you'd lure them into an ambush where you could jump out from a hidden position and attack them, or maybe uh, mine the area or booby trap it. I'm just saying it might make sense from a tactical perspective to create some kind of use the landscape to your advantage instead of an open field, which grants you no kind of advantage unless you happen to be, in fact, wielding artillery, in which an open field might be advantageous to you, but they don't. Um... You know, you think you think the cover of trees might actually be advantageous, or the use of weapons, but no. Jasper inst instead instructs them to run real fast at them and clothesline them at like Mach two, which I guess would hurt, but it doesn't really seem like anything that they weren't doing already. In fact, Jasper doesn't really seem to teach them all that much, except kind of wrestling. I don't know, but what kind of what kind of confused me about that one is, okay, you, just from, actually from both sides, if you're going into a conflict, you know you're going into a fight against other vampires, wouldn't you bring a weapon of any kind? They don't. None of them do. I mean, the werewolves, of course, don't need any, but none of the vampires, like, this is actually the one time when, as a vampire, you might bust out your katana. You know, your your Scottish Claymore. You know, the the weapons that you could use your vampiric strength and speed to wield at an unholy... Use them to an advantage of some kind. Like, can you imagine how fast a vampire could swing like a fucking Claymore and, like, just, just, just run rampant in an open field? But they don't. None of the vampires seem interested in weapons. Uh, no swords, no guns, no flamethrowers, no kind of uh, landmines or booby traps. And before you start calling, like, when would a vampire have a flamethrower or landmines? Well, we're talking about Jasper, who has military experience, who would have access to firearms, or at least the knowledge to acquire and use them, uh, would have knowledge of uh, creating ambushes or uh, some kind of booby traps or landmines. And besides that, after 150 years, I think you might get kind of fucking bored and learned how to defend yourself, learn how to create explosives, acquire some kind of weapons, should you ever encounter the circumstance when, pardon me, you might encounter other vampires or werewolves or other creatures of the night who might want to tear your head off? Just saying. So, none of them carry weapons, even a baseball bat. Because apparently these vampires turn to, like, marble and crumble into dust when you kill them, so, like, a baseball bat, you might think, might be really effective. But no! So they uh, they just kind of kind of play grab ass in the woods and they start fighting each other. And so they decide they're gonna take Bella up. To, they're gonna take her somewhere safe because they don't want like they're after Bella. Victoria wants to kill Bella to remind Edward of the pain that she suffered when Edward killed her boyfriend. Roll with it. So they're like, we're gonna use Bella's blood to lure them into this field, but we're gonna take Bella and take her somewhere safe. 
So they decide to take her to a tent on top of a mountain. Okay. First question that Scarlet pointed out, like before, I didn't even have to prompt her anymore. Like, you know, she's actually getting rather good at pointing out these plot holes. She's like, why did they take her to a mountain? Why didn't they take her somewhere else? Somewhere a little easier to reach. Like, um, police station, a uh, public place like a shopping mall, um, hotel, um, out of state, on a Greyhound bus, on a cruise liner somewhere, a police station, or a police station, or somewhere nobody could possibly reach her. No, a tent on top of a mountain. One of the most badly scouted trips, by the way, because, as it happens, a storm blows in. And, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're aware that a storm is blowing in long before they even get up to the top of the mountain. I think there's a scene where they're preparing for battle in the field, and, like, uh, Alice, uh, uh, Edward says, Alice says there's a storm coming. And Jake, Jacob says, yeah, I felt it. So they know there's a storm coming, and yet they don't prepare for this at all. So they choose the flimsiest fucking tent they could come up with, and Bella immediately starts freezing her tits off, to the point where they think she's going to die. She's under, like, three layers of blankets, but she's freezing to death. And, okay, now here comes the most contrived fucking scene that I think I've ever, I've ever been aware of in any kind of, like... I don't think anyone could possibly watch this scene and not say, like, this is the most contrived horseshit ever. But, okay, so she starts freezing to death. Never occurred to anyone that they could run down, bring a fucking blanket or something like that, or bring a space heater or one of those little chemical pads you put in your blanket and it heats up or an electric blanket or some kind or build a fire. I guess, well, okay, not build a fire because it's storming outside. But you know what I mean. This is not the hardest thing to to work out, you know. So, okay. So, the contrivance comes when she's freezing to death. Jacob, shirtless, comes in and he's like, Bella's freezing. And Nader, Edward's like, I know I can't do anything. I don't know what to do. And Edward, uh, Jacob's like, I will lay on her. Because I have an extraordinarily high body temperature, and I will lay on her and keep her safe. So, this comes the infamous spooning scene, where Jacob big spoons Bella. And Edward has to watch, as the entire night, Jacob is spooning Bella, and kind of like smirking at her, like, I am popping such a boner right now. <laughs> like, I am bonering your girlfriend right in the back. Like, you see that? You feel that? Yeah. You know, like that, Edward? You don't want her to freeze to death, Edward. I'm bonering her like I could do it right now. Like this. And Edward is like, the whole time... By the way, I finally figured out Edward's acting method. Robert Pattinson, this whole time, if you imagine every time he's acting, he is attempting to pass a kidney stone. That's what he's acting like. And that, that's another thing that always bothered me. Like, you never get the impression, whenever they're interacting with one another, Edward and Bella, that they love each other. It looks more like they're in physical pain. And I know that, like, their romance is kind of one of those where, like, they have such problems that it hurts to be them, and they've got so many problems, it, we're in such agony, we always, we're in pain when we're not together, and we're in pain when we're apart, and even when we're together it hurts because I love him so much. But it just, it looks like, like they physically nauseate each other. Like, when they're together, it really looks like they can't stand to be around. They can't wait to get apart. Like, it's it's kind of silly that way. So, this is the part that, that really had me, like, I actually almost stood up and started walking around to, like, just pace off. I was like, oh, shit, you can't... <laughs> what happens is, the next morning, Jacob spoons are all night, okay? So, next morning, storm passes. The place is covered in snow. Bella gets out of the tent, not even shivering. She's fine now. Like, it's it's still snowy. It's, it's it's like, you know, 20 degrees outside. She's fine now. Now that now that Jacob slipped her the slipped her the boner, you know, she's fine. Yeah. So it uh th they're talking and and Edward is Edward lets it slip that they're getting married. Jacob flips his shit. 
He's like, what? What? You're going to marry one of these bloodsuckers? I wish you were dead. I wish you were all dead. I'm out, you know, fuck this. I'm out of here. So, like, Jacob, he starts storming off. And Bella's like, please don't take him. I don't want you to go. Please don't go, Jacob. I need you, Jacob. And Jacob's like, you got to do better than that, bitch. You've been fucking toying with me this whole time. And Bella's like, but please, I don't. I don't think it's I did. I want you to stay. Please take him. And she's like, and she's like I'm leaving. And Bella's like, but, 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 Jacob, I love you. And Jacob's like, what? What? And Bella's like, yeah, yeah, um, kiss me. And Jacob's like, fuck yeah. And like runs up and like just lays like the biggest one on her. And of course the music swells and all the women start like, oh my God, I'm, I'm oh, Jacob. And, <laughs> and so, of course, he's got his shirt off the whole time. Like, oh my God. Like all the women are doing like the DJ diddle sitting down there. Like, oh my God. Um. So, like, music swells up. And he's doing, I'm like, uh, like, what Bella says, kiss me. And I'm like, I, 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 just, I was like, oh, Jesus, fuck it. You, you cannot be serious. Really? Bella is, like, I, 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 I yelled out. And you can ask her. I yelled in the theater, like, she is fucking with them at this point. She is just fucking with them. There's no other way to interpret this thing, like, she is literally fucking with them. Like, just, just, just fucking with them. I couldn't fucking believe it. Like, this whole time, she's like, she's like, I love Edward. It's always been Edward. I always love, I was always, I'm destined to be with Edward. I love him and his pale face and his, his big bushy caterpillar eyebrows. And I want to be with him always because we have so much to talk about. And then she's like, kiss me, Jacob, now. Kiss me hard. And I'm like, this manipulative bitch like it's gone beyond sociopathic behavior okay at first i was like like i was like she's sociopathic she has no understanding no conception she's not even aware that other people have feelings no 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 she's aware of them she has contempt for them she i think she in fact revels in their misery revels in just toying with their emotions and hearts and like like just cackling as she crushes their wills crushes their aspirations and just like takes like takes their hearts out and just like stomps on them like this bitch is toying with these dudes and they are like so eager to be toyed with i i, I couldn't believe it i was just like not only did we have the contrived spooning scene but she's just like like just 20 feet away there's Edward, her fiance at this point, and she's making out with another dude. Because she's like, I love you too. I just love Edward more. I'm like, oh, you fucking whore. <laughs> like, this, she is a piece of, she is, I'm trying to think of a more flat out evil character. And I can't. Like, like, even most villains believe they're doing the right thing. You know, like, like, like the fucking emperor of Star Wars. He's like, I want law and order in this galaxy. That's the emperor. Like, sure, he's like, I embrace the powers of evil to do this, but, like, I want order. This is like, the, the galaxy needs order. But, like, fucking Bella is like, let's, let's see how long I can string these two dudes on. You know, and, like, just fucking toying with them it's unbelievable this woman is th seriously like we should do a character study of the manipulation because it's masterful like it, it, it's amazing this act she puts on to toy with these guys i i'm just rambling about this because like i was rambling in the theater i was like no no really I was just getting like falsetto and like people are looking back like the fuck is with you? I'm like look at this shit! Can you believe this shit? Like this And so of course none of the good guys die in this this epic confrontation which basically occurs in like motion too fast to see that it's really shaky and unclear and really unsatisfying, like you know. Like I said, they, you know, they were building this movie as like this big action climax, and it's really it it's it's like ninety minutes before we get to the confrontation, 
it's like three minutes long and it's not that well shot. Um, I actually think it's a, it's, it's a real miscalculation to make these encounters with the vampires and werewolves so bloodless. Uh, you know, like I said, when they die, they kind of turn into like ash or like a statue. They actually kind of like turn into marble. That's kind of like their motif. But it's all really bloodless. I don't know if it's to preserve the rating, but, you know, for, for a race of vampires whose whole gimmick is that they suck blood, th like, there's really not much blood in this movie. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was I, I, it was amazing how Wonder Woman... I, was, I, I actually thought this would be a better movie because I thought there was going to be, like, a big war. You know, like the guys all standing in a line and the guys charging in the field and the guy... No. And then they fight and then Victoria fights her and I don't know why they recast the redhead, but who cares? Um, so, really the only thing they got accomplished is the redhead is out of their lives. Uh, the Vulturi do nothing to the point where I don't know why they were even involved. I think there's some kind of political thing going on where, like, the Vulturi want to want the Cullens to die, so they were like, well, we'll let the newborns attack the Cullens, and if the Cullens die, cool. I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense. This shit confuses me. And, you know, I've actually been told, I've actually been warned by quite a few people I was like, uh, I was talking to some of my friends on Skype, and they're like, um, "What are you, you going to go see a movie this week? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're going to go see Eclipse. And they're like, Whew. And they're like, are you going to see The Last Airbender? And I was like, yeah, probably. I, I probably should, because I've heard it's really bad. And they're like, don't. Don't. Don't! And I'm like, really? Why? And they're like, it's bad. It's so bad. Like, people were like... You know, like, when I was all shell-shocked after Indiana Jones and stuff like that? I saw people shell-shocked after Last Airbender. And no, but I, I haven't... I, if, if I'm repeating anything the cinema snob has said, I have not seen his reviews of Last Airbender or Eclipse because I actually wanted to go in this with kind of an, oh, an open mind. I still have not seen them. Actually, as soon as I go... As soon as I post this, I'll probably go see them just so to compare notes, but... Um, Last Airbender... <laughs> What really strikes me with that one is, um, okay, Mr. Shyamalan, when uh, you release a movie, w w okay, when the Twilight Saga movie is not the worst movie that was released this week, you need to rethink your profession. And I mean, you need to rethink it hard. Because my brother saw it. And I, I should actually just get him in front of the camera to tell you what the fucking Last Airbender is like to save me the trouble, but... I will probably go end up seeing because I'm actually kind of a, a Shyamalan. You know, it, it, it it's almost like an Uva Bowl thing with him now, where I really liked The Sixth Sense and I really liked Unbreakable and I even stood up for Signs and I don't don't, don't I know with Signs I know the water I know okay just no I know <laughs> you know. <laughs> Okay, I stood up for signs. The village was just like... I called the village before I even saw the fucking trailer. Um, the Happening. If you haven't seen The Happening, see it. Just, just see it. This is... The Happening is a comedic masterpiece. It. I, I, I don't know if... I, Tell me if I've done the Marky Mark impression from The Happening, because if I haven't done it, I'll do it. But I think I've done it. Um, it's I can do it really well. Hey, guys. <laughs> oh, just watch The Happening, and then tell me to do the Marky Mark, and I'll do the Marky Mark. But you have to see the movie first before I do the Marky Mark, because you you'll be like, what the fuck is he doing? What the f like, the, the impression is bullshit. Like, no. See The Happening, because this is a movie, The Happening, where the villain is wind. Yeah. Wind. The, it's like the cheapest, like, of in the history of movie monsters, in the history of villainy, and in the history of movie special effects, 
you will never see an effect as cheap, as pathetic, and as desperate as the wind. There are scenes in this movie where Marky Mark is trying to outrun wind. They are trying to hide from wind. That's the happening. Wind. I actually, I, I, I spent like a week... Not just, like, I wasn't, like, sitting in a room just thinking, like, this one, like, mm. But I was trying to think of more ridiculous things to encounter in a movie than wind. And I came up with a few things. Um, my favorite one was, um, okay, here's the movie. The monster is high humidity. Yeah. So, yeah. If you can come up with stupider monsters than the wind, post your comments here, but... The Last Airbender, I have not seen the Avatar Last Airbender anime. I don't want to. I'm not a big anime fan. Um, I know, heresy. But uh, it just didn't really interest me. Um, and neither really does the movie. Actually, I, you know, seriously, I thought the movie looked okay. I thought, um, I, I'm still kind of of the opinion that as long as the movie kind of keeps the action moving, it can't be that bad. Ignorant me, I know. I mean, seriously, with Twilight, if they had kept the action coming, it might not have been that bad. You know, if they had kept it over, like, three minutes of an action climax, it might have been okay. No, um, but yeah, uh, Shyamalan, man, when you're getting outdone by Eclipse, you, you know, you just gotta, man... That's it. That, that's like I, I know. I kind of seem like I fall silent, but man, you think about that. Like, can you imagine? Like, you, you put a movie out. Like, you spent years on this movie, and like, it's worse than Eclipse. You got it. Like, that's like Hemingway level depression, man. That's that's fucking deep, man. So, yeah, um, thanks for listening, guys. I don't really know what I accomplished here. <laughs> you know, news flash, Eclipse sucks, but I don't know if I've gone over this, but um, you got to hope, Breaking Dawn, you got to hope that movie gets made. And you got to hope that, uh, you got to hope that it goes balls out. Like, it, you gotta hope that it goes balls to the wall. That, th there are scenes in that movie, and yes, I've read, uh, I've read the synopsis on Wikipedia, because I've heard people kind of circulating rumors about what goes on in that film, or in that book. If even half of that makes it through, I have no idea. The whole imprinting thing, where Jacob imprints on somebody in this movie... Um, the whole rape wolf thing. Uh, <laughs> I have, I have no idea how they're going to pull this off. Uh, it, it will be truly amazing to see them try. I would love to be in this movie. I would love to be backstage for this flick. Just to see the weird shit that goes on, because... Um, seriously, the stuff that goes on in Breaking Dawn, the only guy I think could possibly do it is David Cronenberg. And if you don't know who David Cronenberg is, check out Scanners, check out Videodrome, Naked Lunch, she's anything he's done, and just, you'll see. You'll see. And besides that, if you haven't seen a Cronenberg movie, shame on you. Go see, like, I have, like, every one of his movies, except Naked Lunch, and I'm, I'm working on that. I don't know why I don't have naked lunch, but yeah. Oh, man. Just just look up what happens in Breaking Dawn, or at least ask somebody to tell you, like somebody who knows. Ask him to tell you, because that movie, I still think that movie is unfilmable. I, I don't get how you can do the thing with the placenta and the and the C section and the and the the violent sex and the baby kicking the brick the spine and it it it, it excite it really I'm excited. Like I, of any movie that I'll be there opening day, Breaking Dawn. You b believe that. Because I have to see how they pull this shit off. Like, you, like everything in Eclipse has been leading to this. 
Because, you know, I, I, I think with Breaking Dawn, the next great cultural fall of the Western civilization will finally be complete. And, you know, I was talking with my brother, like, the Twilight thing, how long do you think it's going to be? Like, 15 years? 10? When we look back on the Twilight Saga and go, Jesus Christ, what the what the fuck are we doing? Like, like I was trying to think of cultural fads that were similar to that, like uh, disco. And I was like, nah, disco, well, we kind of make fun of disco, but disco had some merit. No, 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 no. I was like, Vanilla Ice or uh, uh, New Kids on the Block. You know, these things that are like, even today, like punchlines of things that we really thought were just cool as hell, cool as ice, that... That are just, we just look back and we just shake our heads and go like, oh my god. We had posters of that guy. Like, we bought books. We bought tickets to that. And well, I, I even think it's even a little more unique than even like vanilla the Vanilla Ice the phenomenon. Because I don't remember even during the time of Vanilla Ice, people were like... People were so set against Vanilla Ice where people were people were saying, like, Vanilla Ice is horse shit. Like, 15 years from now, we'll say Vanilla Ice was complete crap. No, no, no. Vanilla Ice was big. New Kids on the Block were big. I don't remember anyone saying anything bad about those guys. Like, Twilight, right now, it's like there's this minority who is just, just rabid about Twilight. And yet, there's, another, there's no middle ground with Twilight. There's not people who are like, eh, Twilight, it's okay. No, 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 no. It's either like, you either worship it, or you know, like, you know, like, bone deep, that Twilight is the worst, the, the worst abomination to strike Western culture in the, in the aughts, you know, in the, the year 2000 to 2010. Like, it's, 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 it's just horrendous. It, it's inexplicable. And that's, that was my big journey here. Like, I spent so much of Eclipse going on this journey, like this, this, this introspective journey, just trying to figure it out. Just trying to find one thing that I could relate to, one thing that I could understand about this romance, about this story. And you know what? I failed. I couldn't do it. I don't know. It's inexplicable, guys. And it, it's, it's to the point where it's, it's actually kind of interesting. And there, there might be a movie in this, you know, where like, I, I'm thinking like, some kind of, I, I almost think like documentary, like where I, I have to get like a round table or something like that, but it'd be so hard to do because Twilight fans are not going to line themselves up for ridicule. Who would? You know, I'm not going to be like, okay, here's six Twilight fans going to argue with six haters of Twilight because they're like, the, I think even the six Twilight fans will be like, it's inexplicable. There's got to be some way to explore this fan phenomenon and try to deconstruct it. Like, I gotta get, I gotta get, like, like, doctorates or, or literary experts. You know, people who analyze Shakespeare, literary majors, people who write novels, and just interview them and ask them to explain this to me. Like, Bill Moyers or Joseph Campbell, you know, Hero with a Thousand Faces, uh, The Fucking Power of Myth. There's got to be something I can tie into with this. Like, I gotta, I gotta know. Like, Star Wars. Star Wars and the power of myth. The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Like, at you, like anyone, who's, anyone who's ever taken a cinema class. You know, every asshole who's ever gone to college and taken one of these classes, like, is immediately force-fed this whole Joseph Campbell thing in Star Wars. Where it's like, it harkens back to the ancient myths, but... Bullshit with Twilight, man. Bullshit. I call such bullshit. I, I, but there has to be something. Like, I don't know. I, I, I it, it, it's maybe it's the obsession with finding the truth. I must know. But I need to find some kind of like, uh, if you know of any experts that I could like sit down and interview and just like, just we could we could deconstruct the Twilight Saga and and even if it's like just getting some really smart British guy to tear this film up fucking asshole. I, I, I gotta do it, but... I don't know how long I've been talking. Probably about an hour and a half. Next one will be The Last Airbender, because there will be a slow night. I should be working. should be doing Mazes and Monsters, but no. The Siren Call of Bad Movies. <laughs> it summons me. I'll talk to you later!